Okay, so I've been wanting to do this for a while now, but we're going to make a video series um, like the ultimate guide to IB resources. I'm going to upload a couple of clips every day uh, to the Instagram story. And hopefully by the end of the month, we'll have one big ass video. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to be, but basically all you need to know. Uh, so we split it into three parts. Part one, stuff you can find for free online. So past papers, mark schemes, examiner reports, YouTube videos, etc. Uh, part two, stuff that's worth actually buying. So a couple books that I want to recommend. Uh, maybe Revision Village. We'll talk about some tutoring agencies. And a part three is all the shit that you should just avoid. So there's some scam, scammy looking tutoring agencies. I don't think buying student notes is uh, very worth your money. Um, and some other stuff. Uh, because it's just too much and your time is limited. And hopefully, yeah, it's going to be a great video. Right, so I, I probably should have started the video series off with, with this. Um, like, why should you listen to a random <laughs> Instagram account uh, for advice on the IB? So who am I? Um, so I, uh, Smart IB asked me to do this um, for them. I'm an IB alumni, uh, class of 2017. Got 45 points. Not that that really matters. I think anything over 40, is everyone's the same. Um, it just depends on luck, how much you get in the end. Uh, I've worked as a tutor for both you know, private uh, comp tutoring companies, specializing in the IB, a couple of them. And then I went freelance. I've been an IB uh, substitute teacher in international school. Uh, I've been an IB examiner for a very short spell. Uh, basically taught or helped over 300 students, you know, about 50 different TOK essays and 100 extended essays, I probably want to say. Uh, tutored economics, higher level uh, mathematics, higher level TOK, uh, geography, higher level. I think that, that's basically it. Um, and I've worked with kids from all kinds of different backgrounds. By that, I, I don't mean like countries. Well, countries, yeah. But like from poor schools uh, in like South America that just started doing the IB, that don't have any resources. And also richer schools in Europe who have like an abundance of qualified IB teachers. So I, I, I've seen a lot, you know. I'm not going to say I'm Mr. IB, but I know a thing or two about a thing or two. Um, I have an older brother who did the IB diploma in 2007. And I've kept track of how it's progressed since then. Uh, lastly, I'd rather remain more or less anonymous, just only for the reason because there's 180,000 IB diploma students right now taking exams. Um, I can't help everyone. Even if 1% of you emails me, I can't help 1,800 kids. Cause I'm busy. I'm starting a PhD. So if I can't help everyone, then I'd rather help no. <laughs> no. As in, this video is going to help everyone. But yeah, I'd rather remain anonymous. Okay, so that's that. Right, so still, why, why should you listen? Um, I mean, you don't have to, obviously. But um, you know, it's going to take 45 minutes an hour for the full video. I, you know, an average Netflix episode is what? Basically the same time. Look, I, I really put a lot of time and effort into structuring this and making sure that information is relevant and good. And I really, really do think that if you're, especially if you're at the beginning of your IB journey, if you watch this and take the advice that's in there, it, it's going to take you from, you know, 25 points to 35 points, from 35 points to 45 points. It, it, it really is, you know, you, maybe 1% of you will watch it and be like, oh, this is obvious information that I already knew, but I really, really don't think that's the case. Um, so you might as well, right? You might as well watch the whole thing and then, you know, take the advice that's in there. And I really think it's going to help you a lot. So, okay, so, okay, so I'm a firm believer in that. You can get like 40 plus points just by using uh, the free stuff that's available out there. Like there's no need. Well, besides your textbooks that you have to buy and, you know, your graphing calculator, which you also uh, need to have. There's no need to pay, you know, on top of already those of you who go to international schools and pay big IB fees, you know, any more money because um, it's expensive, right? So in this part, we're going to focus on things like past papers, mark schemes, uh, YouTube channels, Reddit, Discord, um, all kinds of shit that you can find for free online. And I'm going to guide you to the resources that I think are best. Um, we'll start with past papers, I think. Uh, topic one, past papers. So everyone knows that past papers are probably the most important resource for any IB student, given that exams, you know, kind of repeat questions year in, year out. So where do you get them? Well, the first place you should go to is your school. If you're at one of those fancy rich schools where your teachers are very resourceful, they will provide you with past papers. 
Of course, that's only a minority of you. Um, the rest of you have to go online and find whatever you can. And I'll show you how to do that in this section. Okay, so I think this is the format that the video is gonna take. I know it's not ideal. I should learn how to screen record my, my laptop screen, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's the content that matters. Uh, also, by the way, most of the content in this video is based on a chapter from this book. Uh, the chapter is called How to Use the Internet. Um, but it's a great book. I highly recommend checking it out. Okay, so to get every single past paper there ever is, which is 120 gigabytes of past papers, and I suggest you do that. We need to download the torrent file. How do we do that? Well, we start by downloading a torrent client. I suggest you download this program called Qubit Torrent. Once you have that, you need to get the magnet link. And if you remember, we posted it the other month. Uh, but you can find it from our posts. Once you have the magnet link, you just paste it into the browser. Click OK. Click Open Torrent. And that's it. That's 120 gigabytes of past papers downloading right now. Everything you will ever need. See, it's nearly, it's nearly 1% downloaded. Now, I don't need <laughs> all these past papers because I don't do IB anymore. And also, I don't have any room on my laptop. Um, but I suggest you do. And I'm going to explain to you why. Because every single year, uh, the Smart IB inbox is filled with people saying, hey, do you have this physics, uh, you know, time zone one, 2017 or whatever. Look, this is what you do. This is a pro gamer move. You go, to, you go on Amazon or your country's equivalent of Amazon and you search hard drive, one terabyte or whatever. You buy one of these for like, well, 30 bucks, 50 bucks. And that's it. That's all you need. And then you just move those 120 gigabytes onto the external hard drive. And you never have to worry about a single past paper drama in your life. Uh, trust me, this is what all the smart kids do. Download all the past papers, move it to the external hard drive and then you don't have to stress about this ever again. Okay, so continuing on, let's say you're uh, scared of torrents or you can't figure it out. How do you find past papers? Well, the old school way, you just Google that, right? So IB past papers, yeah, enter. And like, there's a bunch, right? Uh, Reddit, we're gonna talk about Reddit in a couple episodes. Um, but if you click around, if you, you know, search around these, you will find what you're looking for. I just think it's nicer to have everything all in one place. But again, the advice is still the same as last time. Once you find the papers that you need, download everything. Um, there might be some dodgy websites here, but, you know, otherwise you can search for a specific paper. So if you know the code, you know, time zone one, time zone two physics, whatever, 2015, just search for that. But this is probably the easiest way to search for past papers is good old Google. Okay, so let's say you want something specific, right? And uh, if you remember the torrent, uh, it only had all the papers up until May 22, right? So let's say you want to see the most recent exam session, which is November 22. So again, you just type in November 22 IB past papers. Let's see. Okay, again, Reddit pops up. We're gonna talk about this in, in just a bit. I have November 22 past papers for all subjects and all languages. Well, look at that. You got lucky. Um, if anyone wants, comment and I'll send you on PM. So you need to get a Reddit account and then there's a few edits. Well, anyways, someone has them. Um, alternatively, uh, like you can go to the official store, but please do not f***ing do this because who is going to pay? You seen that? 200 bucks for past papers you can suck my dick please do not buy these papers that's it's a ripoff yeah sorry i get a little bit um, angry because which kid has 200 dollars lying around for one exam session like why are they so greedy and then you need like 10 exam sessions before like who has a couple grand to spend on something that is free for them because it's electronic are they gonna say oh something copyright this anyways uh there used to be a glorious website called ibdocuments.com but it got shut down last year. Um, it was around from like 2017 and it had everything, really well organized, everything. My guess is the IB found out who was running it and uh, hunted them down and yeah, threatened them. But anyways, uh, it appears as if there's a, there's a new IB docs, IB docs.org. But again, by the time you watch this video, oh look, they also have, let me see somewhere, N22. Oh yeah, right there, November 22. 
Um, and again, by the time you watch this video, this website might be gone. So if you are on this website right now, what do you do? Download everything that you can to store offline, please. Because this is going to disappear. Yeah, just last thing I'm going to say on this is that technically, technically, it is illegal to download these papers and, and share them because it's copyrighted material. Um, but everyone does it, all right? All IB kids do it. No one's got money to buy past papers, all right? What is a little bit messed up is that IBO seemed to hunt down all these past paper websites right before exams. So like a month before exams, they just shut them all down by sending their lawyers and threatening students. That's a bit messed up because they know when the students need it most. So if you're the IBO and you're watching this, not very cool. And also like, you can't be mad at me because all I'm doing is I'm showing students who have a laptop, an internet connection and two hands, how to find past papers. I'm not hosting anything. I'm not sharing anything. So if you want to threaten me that you can fuck off. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, 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 you have been warned that technically it might be illegal for you to be downloading them, but everyone does it. So yeah. So related to past papers and mark schemes are the IB question banks. So what's, a, what's the question bank? It's a searchable online database that contains hundreds of examination questions and the mark schemes and subject reports that align with the IB syllabus. Um, but before that, a quick word on past papers versus mark schemes. So both are necessary. Um, ideally, what I recommend is you use the past papers to do, you actually do them under exam conditions. So on your own. Don't waste the past papers, like use them as if you were taking a real exam. Um, and then you need the mark schemes to see, you know, where you messed up and see what examiners are looking for. The question banks are great for like, if you are struggling with something, with one topic, then you can go to the question bank and you can find all the questions on that specific topic over the last, whatever, 10 years. Um, or if you feel like this topic is going to come up in the exam, sometimes you just have a feeling, then again, use the question bank to focus on those types of questions. And now I'm going to show you uh, where to find the question bank. All right. So normally the question banks are not free, right? You have to pay and I think it's a monthly fee or something. Uh, it's not cheap. But at the moment, this website, and it could be very well down by the time you watch this, has the fifth version of the question banks. So let's say, you know, biology. I don't know. What are you struggling with? Let's say you're struggling with genetics, right? Genes, that's your weak spot. So you go into here and you can see all these questions that have been asked. So in 2017, they asked quite a few, 2020, 2021, but it hasn't come up on oh, 21, 21. So this is really, really useful for, let's, let's pick a question, define mutation, right? There you have the question, there you have the answer, and then you have the examiner's report, right? Which is really, really useful and something that you don't get in just the mark schemes or the past papers. It says, from the examiners, what students tend to miss in this question. So this is really useful. If you if you see a question hasn't come up in a while, go to the uh, marks, uh, go to the question bank and study that topic in and out. On the topic of examiner, or sometimes they're called subject reports. So what are they? Uh, this is an extremely useful document. Uh, reading it and acting on it is essential to ensuring good examination results. This is honestly one of the best resources and probably one that like 90% of IB students aren't even aware that it exists. Uh, usually they come out three months after examinations. So what does it contain? It contains a detailed breakdown of each exam session. It, it details like the percentages that you need to get uh, for each grade. Uh, it also does this for the IA and the EE. Um, it can be really revealing to see how high relatively or low some of the grade boundaries are. So don't underestimate the importance of this report. It's very, very important, if not more important than past papers and mark schemes. Uh, secondly, it also includes uh, an extremely thorough analysis of each question in every exam session. So it's often quite reassuring to see that, you know, questions that you would struggle with are also questions that other students will struggle with. And sometimes it'll include recommendations for teaching. Um, so... And where do you find them? Well, at the moment, this website's still up. So, so either in the question banks as we did yesterday, or let's go here, complete repository. Where are they? Subject reports. Uh, let's do, let's do, let's do economics. Uh, see different languages they got it in. Let's do economics 2019, sure. See, it's, it's a 30 page document, so it's quite a lot. Uh, grade boundaries, so you can see the grade boundaries. Uh, the internal assessment is here. So the examiners are saying what students did and didn't do well oh, in, oh, overall in the IAs. And then uh, I don't know, let's just read a sample comment. Definitions. Many candidates lost mark for vague and correct definitions, including this. See, so, so they kind of describe the general trend of that exam session. So if I were you, I would 
go and I would read all of these. I know it's a lot, but it's, you know, if you, especially if you're IB year one, you got time. Now you know what students did and didn't do right in the exams. Okay, so powering ahead. Uh, the subject syllabus, yeah, so this isn't like a secret document or anything. All of you know about the syllabus. Uh, your teacher probably gave it to you at the start of, of IB. Um, it contains all the information that you need to know for the subject, right? It's kind of like a giant cheat sheet for all the information that you need to acquire. Uh, but I, I think it's important for, for several reasons. First of all, when you're revising, I suggest making notes kind of in accordance to the syllabus, right? So everything that's on the syllabus, they're not going to ask you anything that's outside the syllabus, right? But you got to be a bit careful with that as well. And the second reason why it's important is because, for example, someone yesterday asked me, oh, there's a, you know, the, the new math courses. Can I use past papers from math HL and standard level from the previous courses? Well, just compare the syllabuses. And if the question is still on the new syllabus, then yes, those questions are still relevant. So to find these... Uh Subject. I think it's actually called subject guide, not syllabus. Well, the syllabus is in the subject guide, but let's uh, let's stick with this website. But you can also just Google, like it's not hidden. Um, yeah, subject guides. Uh, what should we go with? I don't know. Let's do biology. Yeah, and you got to be careful, right? Because they do change the subject guide syllabus. So I see in two thousand twenty five, there's going to be a new biology one. But let's just have a look at the old one. Well, not the old one, the current one. Um, Okay, uh, see it's a 180 page document, but, 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 uh, look at the table of contents. See, yeah, the syllabus is in there and then you can see the assessment. So this is an important document in case you have like a clueless IB teacher who doesn't know like how many points the IA is or something like that. Just stick their head into this syllabus. But just download these for all subjects that you take and consult them when you're in doubt about something, you know, with that regard. Right, so as you can see, we've kind of covered all those core um, official IB documents, so specimen papers, the subject reports, the subject guides, the past papers, mark schemes. Now you know what all that is and how to find it. Um, just last thing on, on this, um, again, I, I gotta give credit to, to most of my dialogue was based on just a couple of pages from this book. Well, yeah, we didn't do teacher support material. Maybe we should, but see subject reports. So I've been basing this, um, this entire presentation um, just from a chapter from here, so how to use past papers, and then the other one of uh, how to how to find stuff online, how to get phone marks, right? where is it? How to use the internet, there we go. So yeah, I, I do suggest, and you know, I gotta give credit where credit is due, I do suggest checking out this book um, if you want like a, a more detailed breakdown. Um, hopefully this website is still up when you're here. Remember it's ibdocs.org. Okay. Okay, so next up is Reddit. So full disclosure, I spend a ridiculous amount of time on Reddit, probably, I don't know, three, four hours a day, uh, more than on any social media or any other website. Um, it's like crack. <laughs> uh, so what is Reddit? It's basically a forum slash news aggregator slash, I don't know, meme page collection. Uh, they call it the front page of the internet. Uh, the best way to explain it is for you to just go check it out, reddit.com, create an account, and you can kind of customize, you follow these things called subreddits, and there's a subreddit for whatever niche interest you may have, so cats in boots or whatever the fuck. Um, so what does this have to do with IB? Well, there is an IBO subreddit, right? Reddit slash R I B O. Uh, and let's have a look at what that is and how you can use that. Right, so this is what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like a forum, but then people make posts. So you can do an image post or a text post, and there's comments. There's a little description. Then there's a wiki page with some very useful info and a fact. And then Discord, which we're going to talk about uh, in a sec separately. So how what, what's Reddit useful for? Well, it's useful to see what other students are struggling with. Also, if you have a question and it's not that urgent, as in you can wait an hour or two for it to be answered, then just read the rules of how to post and make a post. And someone, some kind soul, I guarantee you, will answer your IB-related question within, yeah, an hour or two. Um, if you have a more urgent question that you need answered within, like, a minute or a couple of seconds, then use Discord, which we'll talk about next. But, yeah, no, Reddit is, is great. And you can see here, there's 120, uh, 114 thousand members so for comparison the smart ib instagram page is like eighty thousand followers so it's huge 
Yeah, just with regards to content, I will say that it's become a little bit less active despite the high number of members. We can see there's 290 people online because right now people are sending for exams and also a lot have shifted to Discord because they like chatting live, whereas here it's only, you know, post and then wait for a reply. Um, and there's a lot of memes, uh, which I think you can filter out somehow. Um, but you can also, you can also, uh, rank, uh, you can list, um, sort by, I mean, you, know, you can see the most popular posts of this year, but as you can see, it'll probably be, yeah, see it's, it's memes and the memes are pretty good. I mean, we, we, a smart IB steals a bunch, <laughs> um, but that's, that's, that's some very useful info. And like I said, if you have an, a problem and you would like some advice, you know, picking subjects or IA related or teacher problems. Post on Reddit and someone will help you out. That's IB Reddit. Discord is a voice over IP application, which was, I think, initially kind of popularized and uh, made for the gaming community. Because like when you play video games and there was no way to chat, they would add each other on Discord and then that's how you got friends. Um, but now it's used for all kinds of different communities. So the official IB Discord is actually run by the... Um, the people who do the the Reddit um, IBO page, they're the moderators as well, I think. Um, it can be a bit confusing, which is why you should try and read through the rules and how to use it when you install it. Um, but it's really, really good because it's like you can instantly chat with um, other IB kids all over the world. And it's really popular. Let's have a look at it now. So to find it, you just type in you know, IBO Discord. That will be the first link there. Now you need to create an account. Um, which is, you know, it's quite quick. Let's have a look how it looks like. So for, I don't actually, you know, so I don't actually, oh, fuck off. So I don't actually use, um, Discord. I don't know. I, I just find it a bit too overwhelming, these large chat groups. So you can see here, there's like, I don't know, I think there's like several thousand IB kids in here. I mean, online all at once. I mean, it's broken up into like M23, N24. Uh, so there's like specific revision rooms and I don't know, places where you can go and ask for help. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's really, people who do use it really like it because, you know, it's, there's some comfort in talking to IB kids from all over the world. Um, you know, for revision, there's specific like revision groups. Um, so if this is something that would appeal to you, if you want to make some friends at other IB schools and chat, uh, then check it out. So yeah, YouTube is, is an obvious resource that's free that you can use, but I feel like a lot of IB students don't use it as much as they should. Um, there's a number of outstanding IB channels that can truly make a difference to your IB journey. Uh, so don't count out YouTube as a valuable learning tool, especially if you're a visual learner and especially if you have shitty teachers at school. So YouTube has some amazing IB teachers and a lot of them are better than the ones at your school. And they will go, they will go through past paper questions sometimes and do questions. Um, so I, I can't go through too many subject specific YouTube channels because, you know, I, I only did seven subjects and I can't really speak to like psychology or business and management. So you're gonna have to do some searching yourself. Uh, there's a couple of general things, videos I want to discuss. Um, but yeah, let, let's, let's have a look at how to, how to find the best IB related YouTube videos. Yeah. So you just gotta choose the right keywords, I guess. So I just type in IB tips and then just, you know, keep one eye on how many views it has. So these, you know, have like 20,000, 100,000. That's probably good. Uh, so this is just general IB stuff. You know, it's good to watch these to get motivated. Like this girl got 45. So she must know what she's talking about, you know. Um, then like IB, uh, subject specific, you type in IB math, or I guess now you have to say AI or uh, AA. Revision Village has a channel, which apparently is really, really good. Again, chemistry, type it in. Richard Thornley is apparently really good. Uh, IB advice is another good keyword to search. This, this girl's video is, is good. Uh, and then uh, lastly, I just want to quickly talk about this channel. IB like Cole. Um, so I, 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 I've spoken to this guy a couple times. He's, he's great. Like these videos are top, top tier. Um, I recommend watching all of these before you start IB. If everyone watched all these videos before they started IB, like they would get 35 points plus for sure. Okay, so this is a resource that's not mentioned in the book because it is brand new. I think they launched like only a couple months ago, maybe. It's Questor.io is the name of the website. And it is a large um, uh, IB resource um, database. 
Uh, so the, the way they built it, and it's a great team behind the, the project, um, very helpful. If you have any questions, you can contact them directly. So the way they've built it is by taking on a couple hundred volunteers of current students and alumni and getting them to add stuff to the websites for other students to use. Uh, so you have this large, huge bank of online resources like websites, YouTube videos, guides, Quizlets, uh, all for free, all for IB students. Um, and they are adding stuff every day. So um, please get in touch with them if you feel like you can contribute. And now let's have a look at what the website looks like. So this is what the home page looks like. Then make sure you go into the IB um, section. And then let's have a look. Um, yeah, let's look at Langham Lit. So as you can see, like there's these things called quests. So general resources, I, the IO, and then I don't know, let's have a look at paper one. How to ace every exam component in English. A YouTube video from the IB English guys. And, and this is all, keep in mind, this is all like curated by someone uh, here, the contributors. Um, so yeah, I haven't had too much time to play around with this, but but it's been getting uh, rave reviews from current students. I particularly like the interface. Um, there are also past papers and all that other stuff that you would find on the other IB resource websites. Um, it looks really cool and it's very easy to use. I suggest when you arrive to just create an account. I don't actually have an account yet. Okay, so have a look and message the Quester team if you have any questions. Revision Dojo. So another one of these things that just came out. Yes, so this is how it looks. Pretty uh, sleek and stylish. Uh, I love my students worldwide. There's some stats for you. Uh, these are the features, questions sorted by topic, which is really nice. It's like the, the question banks. Save questions, past papers. Uh, there's flashcards, I think, coming up or already there. Um, see, some of these have a, some sort of AI integration. I haven't played around with it too much, I'll be honest with you, but I think these questions are like generated by AI based on what kind of questions have already been asked. Um, and then of course, past papers. So if the other past paper websites get shut down, you can always come here and then, you know, um, Afrikaans. <laughs> I do want to learn Afrikaans. So that's all the past papers from like 1990, I think, um, if not or earlier. So yeah, check it out. Revision Dojo. While it's still free, go check that shit out. This is probably going to be the most important section of this entire video series. I'm going to show you over the next couple of minutes how to download any single book or journal article that you are interested in in just a couple clicks. That's right, any single book, whether it be textbook or normal book, and any single journal article, no matter which database it's in. Um, this might not be super useful for your IB studies because you already know where all the textbooks are on IB Docs, for example, but it's gonna be paramount for when you go to college and you're gonna need to buy you know, $1,000 worth of textbooks and you're gonna need to download journal articles almost every time you write a paper. So, Definitely useful for that. Um, small disclaimer, this is probably illegal where you're living uh, to actually download the books because, you know, it's copyright. And unlike the IB coming after your ass, now it's going to be, you know, Oxford Publishing or Cambridge Publishing. So you're de dealing with a different animal here. So you are warned. Right, so let's start with, with books. Books is quite easy, right? You go to Google and you type in libgen, L-I-B-G-E-N. Now, I... Uh, it depends where you are. Some of these links might not work. It depends in different countries. Your ISP might have blocked some. But eventually, just keep clicking on different stuff. Or type in libgen mirror if you're struggling. But eventually, you should land on a page that looks like this. Library Genesis. If you're here, that's good. And now, we just type in the book that we're after, right? So, let's do chemistry and then IB, right? Click search. And boom. Do some of those ring a bell? Chemistry for the IB Diploma by Hotter Education. Chemistry for the IB Diploma course by Cambridge, Oxford University Press. Here you can see the format that is gonna be in. So it's PDFs, PDFs, which is great. Uh, then what you gotta do is you see mirror, it says here, you gotta click on one of the mirrors. It's gonna take some time to load. Right, does that look familiar? Right, does that look familiar? Okay, now to download the book, you just click the top button that says get. And eventually, it will start downloading, I think. Okay, so it sees downloading there at the bottom, 100 megabytes. Now, I'm not actually going to download it. 
because um, I don't want to risk the wrath of, uh, I don't want, you know, uh, Oxford Publishing uh, breaking down my door with a SWAT team. But uh, if you... So th the beauty is that is that it works for literally any book. It doesn't have to be a textbook. It can be, it can be a university textbook, right? For example, if you do economics, you will probably be using microeconomic analysis by Varian. Let's see. Microeconomic analysis. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay, so if it takes you to a page like this, then the mirrors are down here, and then you gotta click one of those, and then click get, and then it will download at some point. Um, but again, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that, but it will. It doesn't have to be a textbook, right? It, what's what's the number one Times bestseller right now on the list? What What's the name of the f uh, redhead royal fuck? Harry, right? Harry, and the name is Spare, Spare, Spare Brain Cell. If you wanted to read Spare by Prince Harry, <laughs> the Duke of Sussex, you can now download the full book and read it on your iPad. I don't know why anyone would want to put them read it on your iPad. I don't know why anyone would want to put themselves through that. But as you see here, the the format can be different, right? So EPUB, you need a special app to open, but there are PDFs. So let's see. Oh my God, there is a stupid fucking face. So if I click get, I will have the PDF of this book and I can read it. But I would not want to do that because that sounds fucking terrible. So there you have it. Try it out with any book, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. I, I don't know many books. Any book will be on there and you can download the PDF and I've just saved you like thousand dollars. You're fucking bitches. Right, so I've also promised to show you how to access any journal article that you're interested in. Now, this isn't something that's super useful for the IB because you don't really read journal articles. Well, I guess for your extended essay and your IAs, you might be, you should be maybe considering looking at academic journal articles. But once you get to university, especially if you're doing a humanities degree, you will be uh, reading lots and lots of journal articles actually at the, the, the top universities. So uh, normally you would, you know, find journal article on Google Scholar. So for example, my PhD is on the simulation argument. So let's just do that as an example. Simulation argument, right? So let's say, let's say I want to read this article, right? Uh, and journal, academic journal articles are always like in different, um, in different uh, databases. So there's Springer Link, there's JSTOR, there's Science Direct, right? So see, if I want to read this, <laughs> buy the article PDF, 30 pounds. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to read one article. Now your university usually tells you, um, um, how to access it, but it's, it's annoying. Basically what you got to do, if you want to do it for free and quick is you type in sci hub on Google sci hub, then you click that use one of these mirrors, right? Then what I did was I copied the, the link that with the actual link, right? You copy the link, paste it into this, click open. And there you go. What 30 pounds, I'm not paying 30 pounds, two clicks and you have the full article. And this works for 99, 98% of all articles. It has, it has all the big databases for all the sciences as well. Uh, if you do a science degree, you're gonna be reading lots of articles. So Sci-Hub, and the key thing is you copy the link and you paste the link and there you have access. You have access to the entire world's knowledge of, of journal articles. Uh, so that's that. Uh, yeah, you'll be doing lots of that at uni. Right, so remember how we started this entire video series? looking at IB Docs, and I said to download everything because by the time you watch this, IB Docs will probably be down. And surprise, surprise, it is down. Um, well, in, in some capacity. I've been told that even though the main website is down, you can still access it using Tor. What is Tor, I hear you ask? I have no idea. <laughs> but but give me two minutes. I'm going to figure out what it is, how to use it, and then we'll, we'll go find IB Docs again. No stress. All right, give me a two minutes. Okay, so that was actually surprisingly simple. I don't know why I thought it would be really complicated. So as you can see, this is IB Docs. It's down. But they even just give you the instructions here. Anyways, I downloaded Tor. Uh, really simple. Just Googled it, downloaded it. It's a, I don't know, it took two minutes to download. Once you have it downloaded, <clears throat> you once you're on Tor, access the repository here, right? So this is a link. Just copied that link opened up Tor, I guess just paste it into the fucking thing. And let's see. Come on, come on. 
Hey, there we go. Wow, okay, so look, if I can figure, like my mom can figure this out, all right? If my mom can figure it out, you can figure it out. So everything's there. Download tour. Oh, oh, well, one word of advice. I would save this link. Well, actually, I would download everything like I told you originally, but save the tour link because this subreddit might go down and this website might go down. Okay. So we're nearly done with this video series. Just a few more loose ends to tie up. So yeah, there are WhatsApp and Telegram groups uh, dedicated for IB students. Uh, you can find them by Googling, which we'll look at in a sec. Um, I personally don't like uh, the WhatsApp and Telegram groups. I'll, I'll explain why. First of all, because it's not well moderated. So if you happen to find yourself in a WhatsApp group and someone from India comments during exams, you know, what's on the paper, then everyone is f***ed who's in that group, whether you're active or not. You know, the Discord I like because it's actually moderated by our IBO. Um, also, have you ever been in a WhatsApp chat room with more than 10 people? Yeah, so to find them, it's very basic. Just type in IB WhatsApp group link and... I think some of this will be out, outdated, but there's always, okay, see here's March, 2023 um, on RIBO. And same thing goes for Telegram, Telegram group for IB students. Just Google around and you'll find something. But again, I would warn you, because this has happened before in the past, um, just by being in a group and not even saying anything, if someone, you know, uh, does some academic dishonesty stuff with regards to, you know, time zone manipulation, you could get easily screwed. So I would be very careful about which groups you join and know that there's, you know, bad actors at play. Um, the one Telegram group I do suggest joining, I can't find the link here now, is the Telegram for IB resources. Because if anything goes down, they tend to write in their group uh, where they're going to host the papers and stuff. Okay, so that's that's that. So I think I'm going to basically wrap it up here. This will be the last bit of the free part. Um, one thing to keep in mind is what I said at the beginning, like there's too much stuff available and you don't have infinite time, right? Two years is actually not that long if you think about it. So you need to learn to prioritize good resources over bad instead of just searching for more and more and more. Um, and definitely don't pay for stuff which you can get for free. Um, if I remembered something that I should add, I'll, I'll try and squeeze it in. But I think we're just going to look at a few more free websites and then we'll, we'll wrap this series up, part one of it anyways. Okay. Yeah, so a couple of resources that don't really deserve to have their own section because they're not that important, but still I want to maybe just throw them in at the end here. So ivysurvivors.com, from what I remember, there used to be some free stuff in here that's not in the other. There's some IA books here, some ebooks, right? Uh, there's some really good ebooks, but they're not free. But there's this mother load of stuff. Yeah, that was good, I think. Now, IB Survival dot com used to be like the forum for ib students but it was bought out by a tutoring company and i think it just basically went to shit. yeah see no replies no replies but there may be some archival stuff um but basically i uh, read it is way better i don't know if anyone uses this and finally also it's probably died out but ib students worldwide was really really popular like ten, five years ago but now facebook is not used by kids anymore so again it's just people trying to sell their notes. <laughs> Bit of a ghost town. Yeah, that's it. Right. Uh, with part two. So we're going to talk about yeah, commercial resources, paid resources. So stuff that's not free, right? So I'm still adamant, uh, as I mentioned in part one, that like 95% to 99% of resources that you need um, are free. And I think we saved you about $1,000 in part one. So definitely check that out. However, there are certain things that you may wish to buy, right? Some things that you need. For example, some things you definitely need, like a calculator, pens and pencils for the exam, right? Like you can't go without buying that. But also we feel like there's some books that are really, really good, which are not available as PDFs, at least not at the moment. And we really recommend. So we're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about things like Revision Village, uh, tutoring, should you get a tutor? So if you have like a $100 you know, dollar, uh, budget, what should you spend it on with whatever little money you have? Yeah, that's what we're going to discuss. Okay, so let's talk about calculators. Um, I personally recommend this old school TI-84 Plus Silver Edition. But uh, if you Google IB Calculator, you'll stumble on this PDF document from the IBO. And this is the official listed calculators. A lot of people like the, the new, um, well, the newer TI and Aspire. But if you go for the TI-84, you can find some pretty good deals on eBay. 
um, yeah, from $30 to $50. So if you want to save some money, buy a secondhand one. Um, yeah, some people go, well, yeah, some people go for Casio, but a lot of love for the TI-84. I think it does everything you need it to do. Um, and also, while you're looking at documents here, you'll see also from the video, it's called the Calculator Guidance for Examinations Booklet 2022. So have a read of that, and then you know for which paper you're allowed what. Okay. Yeah, so I, I didn't actually know this, but um, Texas, TIA, Texas Instrument has a dedicated page for IB Diploma. So if you get one of their calculators, they actually have like free webinars, and they show you how to best use the calculator in exams, which probably suggests that you should go for, I don't know, if, I don't think Casio does the same. I'm not sure about the others. There's a lot of resources here. So if you just Google IB calculator, hop on Reddit, see what people are talking about. But as I said, you can't go wrong with the TI-84 and you can get a good deal on it. So that should save you some money if you buy second hand or ask around, right? In your school, those are finished, often sell their calculators to the kids um, in the grade below, assuming they don't need it for uni. But um, yeah, you should be able to get a good deal. Don't spend more than $100 on a calculator, please, because you can definitely find one cheaper, and especially if it's in TI-84. Okay, so that's buying a calculator. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, talk about books. So not textbooks per se, right? Because we covered that in part one. I showed you how to download any textbook you want for free, almost from Cambridge Press, Oxford Press. And also because it's difficult to talk about textbooks for each subject as I'm not an expert in each subject. So these books I'm gonna talk about aren't available as PDFs. Well, not at the moment. I mean, you, you can try looking. Uh, so there's some general help books. There's some IA books. There's a TOK book that I really like. We're gonna be talking about all these. And to be honest, I quite like these books in physical form. Um, it's nice to have them like in your backpack and to consult them. That's why I suggest to all my students to get these books and then they keep them and just keep going through them um, each day of their IB journey. So yeah. Okay, let's talk about books. So we'll start with these three. Um, you might've seen them around already. Uh, I heard someone refer to them as the Holy Trinity of IB help guides. Uh, yeah, so this they all came out at different times. This one came out in 2018, I think this one 2020, and this one just came out last year. Uh, they all have different stuff inside and we're gonna go through each one um, in the next videos. Uh, so whenever we do talk about books like this, um, there's always some students who are skeptical and say like, hey, we're IB students, you know, we don't have time to read a so 300 pages, yeah, 280 page book about the IB. But then, you know, um, when, July 5th rolls around and results come out in our DMs. Um, there's always students commenting like, hey, uh, thank you so much for making me read this book. I went from failing to not failing, or I went from uh, 34 to 39, or you know, I got a 45. Um, so yeah, th there, is, there is some good stuff in here, some really good stuff. Um, but I, I do understand the skepticism because um, it does seem a bit gimmicky and it's like, well, I'm not a big fan of, of like self-help books in general, but the content in here is not really like self-help stuff. Some of it is a little bit obvious, but most of it is like, I don't know, it's, it's really good advice. Um, the other thing is, is like, if you do get them, like you have to read them. Like someone also commented one time, like, hey, uh, these books are only useful if you read them. Like, yeah, no shit. Um, you know, you have to actually not just read them, but then enact the advice that is given. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go through each one really quickly. I'm gonna show you the table of contents and a few pages. But you could also go on the website of the publisher, which is zuyofpublishing.com. Um, and I'm at the end, I'm also gonna give you some tips on how you can maybe get them for free, get, convince your librarian or ID coordinator to get them. So yeah, we'll start off with, we'll start, start off with this one. Actually, start with this one since it came out first. So yeah, 45 tips, tricks, and secrets for this successful IB student. Over 300 pages. You can have a look at the back. I'll show you the table of contents. So it's actually 45 chapters, which is, I guess, quite neat. And it covers basically, yeah, everything. Um, it covers like sub some subject-specific stuff too, to chemistry, physics, biology. Um, it, it basically has everything you would need to know <laughs> to do well in the IB. Um, no, obviously it's, it's that f***ing long. Um, so what I always recommend when I'm tutoring is my, I do the first tutorial session for free and I just buy 
my students this book and I tell them, put it in your backpack and then just read a chapter or two every day, like on the bus ride. Or if you're yet to start IB, read it over the summer. Or if you're an IB year one, read it over the summer. And then, yeah, you'll do well. So yeah, if you're curious into any specific chapter, maybe just throw me a DM and I'll get permission to, to post a whole chapter. But um, yeah, it's it's and it's written in a very easy to read way. Uh, it'll take you like a day, a couple of days to read. But I'd also just doing it all in one go, right? Just um, just a couple chapters here and there, or read the specific ones for you. So the IB presentation, uh, calculator tips. The extended essay chapter is really good. Um, then the past papers and revision tips are really good. So you might be wondering, like, look, is this information that's in this book is it available, you know, on the internet? And the short answer to that is I haven't seen anything so like everything summarized in one place, right? You might be able to find, you know, Reddit threads here and there with some advice, but everything in one, uh, 300 words. So it, it has everything uh, from a person who knows a lot about the IB. So yeah, it's good. Um, do try and get your hands on it, whether from the library or buying it. So I want to see how much it costs and it's just under 30 bucks, which I think is fair. Um, and yeah, don't take my word for it. You can read the reviews. Um, always try and read uh, good, good advice for IB students. IB students yeah, yeah. If only pay attention to the verified purchases, right? Um, yeah, so uh, it's on Amazon. It's on a lot of retailers, I think. If it's, oh yeah, so sometimes students say they would have difficulty getting it shipped to like if they're in India or China. So check with like your local, lo your local version of Amazon. There should be something there. Um, let's see. Yeah, have a read of the reviews. And again, uh, at the end of all this uh, review stuff, uh, b book stuff, um, I'll try and explain to you how you can get your hands on it for free. Um, but yeah, have a look, uh, read other people's reviews and then decide. But I do really, really recommend it. And it's fair for the price. Uh, that's like less than one tutorial session, right? It's half a tutorial session. All right, so moving on with the books. Um, so this came out last year or two years ago, I think. And it's basically, yeah, about you know, 99% of you are gonna go on to university. So this book, um, it's kind of a guide of how to use your status as an IB student, when you share the table of contents, right? Cause there's a lot of information out there like on applying to universities in general, but there's not that much that's IB specific, right? So he, like there's entire sections on like how to write personal statements from the viewpoint of being an IB student, you know, talking about things like CAS and um, your extended essays. So there's, there's a bunch of like little tips and tricks um, uh, that only IB students can use. Um, and that way they get into university. It's really good. I do recommend like if you're planning to apply to the US, UK, although it's got chapters um, from a bunch uh, of different countries, but US and UK is especially good. Um, here are the countries. Um, there are also has information from Hong Kong, Germany, Netherlands, Australia, Canada. Oh yeah, the other really good thing in here is that it has an Augsburg chapter. So um, how to use how to how do IB students approach their Oxford or Cambridge applications? Um, the UK admission process is really really good. And then a chapter from medicine. I think it's got like feedback from students. Oh yeah, you can read personal statements, like examples of amazing personal statements that got people into like Harvard and and Oxford, and these are all IB students um, from, from previous years of applying. Yeah, it's good. Um, you know, there's university profiles for each country. Uh, yeah, so obviously, like, if you're only gonna apply to one country, then a lot of, not a lot of the book, about 30% of the book will be relevant to you, right? But um, it's worth getting just for this beginning uh, 100 pages, um, especially the personal statement and application stuff, it's really good. Yeah, just a quick price check. So it's under $20. Um, available also on Amazon. As you can see, it's frequently bought together with that one. And let's see the reviews. Great tips, very helpful. Uh, very helpful guide. Basically got me into Oxford. Oh, well. This is a very, very useful book. Basically has chapters for a bunch of different countries. With, uh, um, I only read the US chapter, but yeah. So all in all, it's pretty good um, if you're serious about getting into university, which, well, actually it's the summer. So IB year, those of you going into IB year two should really, really be 
already um, knowing which colleges you're going to apply for. And this book will definitely help you with that process and also help you decide um, which countries to apply to. All right, check it out. Okay, and finally, the secret art of passing the IB diploma. Okay, so I really, really like this. Um, I think every IB student should read it. It's only, well, it's still 200 pages. Oh yeah, so you might be wondering what's the difference between this and this, and this written by the same person. Um, this is like for everyone. Well, this is like if you're struggling with the IB um, and you want some, some really good tips, right? It's just a, like general advice. Um, this is more for like, if you're going for 40 plus points um, and it's longer, right? It's 300 pages. But this is like for anyone just struggling, worried about passing the IB. Um, I suggest starting off with this book, read it. It's really good. It's got like, well, I'll show you this in a sec. There's the table of contents. But then it's also got like these pro tips, which are really, really useful. It covers everything. IA is extended essay, um, internal assessments. Um, yeah, so start off with this one. And then if you like it, then you can always get that one. Yeah, so every single kid that I tutor, I make sure that they get this book and then read it. It doesn't take long, well, take a couple of days to read. But like read it, highlight it, keep it in your backpack. Um, how to choose your subjects, uh, let's see what else. Oh yeah, like how to manage relationships with your coordinators and stuff like this, that's a really useful chapter. How to hack your graphic display calculator and formula book. Uh, revision tips are really, really good. Um, it's just got like loads of practical stuff how to get all three bonus points. Uh, yeah. And let's see how to succeed in the classroom. And it talks about, um, the first couple chapters of like choosing your subject and then why, yeah, that's, that's a kind of an ominous stat, a stat, why one out of four students fail. And it just kind of gives you reasons why you won't be one of those students. It's good. Check it out. Okay, so uh, before the IA books, T-O-K. Uh, yeah, so this was sent in to us um, a couple of months ago. So it's really, really new. So uh, you probably have a T-O-K textbook that your school uses. But fuck all that. Like those are useless. <laughs> well, they're not useless. They're okay for certain things and if your teacher follows the curriculum. But if you want to get an A in the stupid essay and the or presentation or whatever it's called now, this book is really, really good. Okay, you can see the back. Uh, took an instructor for over 20 years. Like this guy knows what he's talking about. It goes over the assessments. It goes over the, the essay. Here, table of contents. The basics, it in a nutshell took an essay. Yeah, it's really, really good. Like it gives you ideas of what to do, what not to do. It goes through the assessment criterion. Um, I was pleasantly surprised because I didn't think you could actually make a good TOK book. So yeah, I, I understand it's only, well, it's not even three points. It's one and a half points, right? Combined with the extent essay. But those points are still valuable. And I suggest you go for all three. And this book will help you get... Uh, that one and a half, should we see a sample chapter? Structuring the essay. Structuring the essay makes it like complex, but... It's, just, it's written really well. Like after I read, oh yeah, and it's got like seven examples of great essays that scored an A, which is always helpful to see um, where to start. Yeah, like it gives good, uh, if you're struggling to come up with the original ideas, it gives where to look. I have the exhibition, that's what it's called. Um, and I don't think it's that expensive. I'm going to check now, price check. But um, yes, if there's one TOK book that you get for yourself, it should probably be this one. And as I said, it's really, really recent. Like it talks about uh, May 2024, 20, 23 essays. And... All right, so quick price check, 20 bucks. Not bad, not cheap, but uh this is a tlk book in the students i doesn't have any reviews because it literally came out in april 2023 so it is recent uh perfecting the tlk essay how to structure yeah i mean for 20 bucks like it's better value for money than any stupid tlk uh tutor or you know whatever guidance you can get uh it's definitely better than your tlk textbook because those textbooks are useless like they have a bunch of TOK information, but they don't tell you how to actually get the f***ing A. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm going to throw up a link here and check it out. It's good. As in, if you want to go for the three points. If you don't want to fail, then yeah, get that. Okay, so we're still talking about IB books, right? We're going to continue this, this series. Um, so I did promise I'm going to tell you how to get uh, books for free or cheaper or because, yeah, if you see, you can see here, frequently bought together, those three. Because if you see, like, once I add everything that I need for my subjects, so TOK, Math AA, Physics, Economics, and then the three core ones, it adds up to, like, nearly 180 bucks, right? Which isn't cheap at all. Um, I do think it's all relative, though, right? So that, like, 180 bucks is, like, one tutoring session with a so-called elite IB tutor, or you get like seven books that you need for your subjects. Um, and also like one, you know, chemistry textbook costs what, like a hundred bucks on its own. So it, it is a bit, a little bit relative, but I'm gonna talk about um, several ways that you might be able to get these books for free or cheaper. So here we go. Okay, so the first place to go to, if you wanna get your hands on these books ASAP is your school library. Um, so these books have been out for, the ones that have been out for a while anyways, um, are quite pop popular. Uh, I know in Singapore, in the United States, they're very popular. In the UK, they're quite popular. So go to your library and ask your librarian, um, just show them like, hey, do, you do we have this book? Or search in your um, library search computer thing. Um, yeah, so library is the first place to go. Uh, if they don't have it there, then we move on. Right, so you went to your library, you asked and wasn't available. Uh, move on to the IB coordinator. So I don't know what kind of relationship you have with your IB coordinator. Um, and if you read this book, it would teach you how to foster a really, really healthy, uh, productive one. So you go to your IB coordinator and you say like, look, Mr. Um, Smith, whatever the fuck his name is, uh, why is our school average, you know, 32 points? Um, can we please get some of these books? And usually the response will be positive. Well, I mean, you need to, you know, tell them a little bit about them, show them some reviews, say that, you know, we, we've been hearing about them on Instagram for a while. Um, and normally if you go to a school that has, you know, public funding, the, the government funds it, so, or if you go to a rich international school, your IB coordinator will be more than happy to spend a little bit of that, you know, juicy call, uh, juicy uh, school, fun, uh, school, uh, yeah, kitty <laughs> on some fucking books. So talk to your coordinator. Right, so we're talking about how you can get your hands on um, all of these IA books for free or at a reduced cost. So library, IB coordinator, um, and then have a chat if you're close to any alumni, right? So people who have already finished the IB, they might not have these IA books, the specific ones you're looking for, but they might have uh, 45 tips, tricks, and secrets, or this pink one, maybe the university one, right? And they don't need the books anymore now they're at uni. So talk to some IB alumni and see if you can get some books from them for free. And this applies to other books as well, right? Like core subject textbooks. Uh, yeah, so that's point three. And then, yeah, if that all that fails um, and you don't want to pay what, nearly yeah 200 bucks for basically all the books that you need to succeed and get a seven, then yeah, your parents, which I know I, I didn't, yeah, I was thinking whether I should include this point or not, because I know the financial situation varies that like really, really differently, right? Um, so there's some kids who go to private schools and have, you know, unlimited funding. And there's some kids who are from poorer backgrounds, you know, and they, they really, really don't have 200 bucks to spend on books. But I don't know, usually parents are quite supportive uh, of, you know, getting stuff for you to do well in school. So do do talk to your parents. And you know, if you don't want to spend your own money, and maybe, maybe they can get it as a Christmas present. I know some people do get um, some of these IB textbooks as Christmas presents or birthday presents. Um, but yeah, so parents as, as a kind of final resort. Um, yeah. Right, and as a final, final resort. And this is quite important because a lot of you have messaged me already and said, hey, I want to get these books, but they don't deliver to uh, India, China. So like, I guess I'm, so I'm based in, in, the, in the States, right? I'm in New York. Um, and uh, delivery is quite easy, like Amazon Prime, it's on Amazon. I know it's on Amazon UK and Amazon in Europe, um, but if you live somewhere where it's, you know, delivery is expensive or it's really hard to get, 
uh, first thing you should do is check like your local Amazon. So for example, I have a friend who lives in Belgium and they don't have, well, I don't know if they have Belgian Amazon, but they have this thing called Bowl, which is like Belgian version. And it's on there. All these books are on there, uh, slightly higher price. And then finally, finally, you can reach out to the publishers, right? So half of these books are published by Zoof Publishing, and I'll link in a sec. Maybe, maybe they can send you like, I don't think they do eBooks, but maybe they can, I know they do discounts for schools and shit. Right, so this is what the Zwift Publishing website looks like. Uh, this is the home page. So yeah, you can see that if your school orders a bunch of copies, they get a huge discount. Um, it doesn't even have, yeah, so yeah. So talk to your school, because 50% off is, is huge. Um, and then let's see, yeah, they have like sample pages at least. You can see some, I don't know how, how many sample pages, and you can see all the books here. And there's a contact form. I think they have an Instagram as well. Um, so you might be able to get a book shipped to you if you live in the middle of nowhere. Um, so yeah, that covers IB books, um, as part of this paid resources thing. Uh, next week, next week, we'll look at things like revision village. We'll talk about whether you should get IB tutoring. We'll talk about other paid services that may or may not be worth it. But yeah, as far as books goes, get them early, read them and yeah, good luck. Okay, so we're pushing on with our paid resources worth your worth your money. Um, Manageback. So Manageback is a leading planning assessment and reporting platform for the IB. I think it's used by like 80% of diploma candidates. There's a good chance your school already uses it. Um, it was founded by a bunch of actually ex-IB students back in 2006. So if your school doesn't use it already, we highly suggest you lobby them to <laughs> to, to pay for it. Um, I think it's one of those things that, that schools pay for, so it's not like you are paying for it. So the plan was to wrap up this section by talking about tutoring, um, but then something came up, and that something is Revision Dojo. So uh, full disclosure, like once a week, we get approached by some IB company offering premium tutoring or whatever, and we always say no. We, we don't advertise anything. We don't do any um, uh, pay sponsored content. But I found Revision Dojo myself uh, via Reddit, and I contacted them because I really, really believe in this uh, service and this product. Um, I think it's gonna be a game changer for IB students in how they revise and how they do their assessments. So I've actually been in touch with the, with the team behind Revision Dojo and they've offered um, a discount for all followers. So let's talk about, so what is it? Um, in a sentence, it's like taking Revision Village and pumping it full of AI steroids. <laughs> um, it's just, it's like having a personal robot tutor with you 24 seven. But the best way to show you is to actually show you. I think a lot of you are already familiar with Revision Dojo. I think they had about 20,000 kids use it for the M23 session. But last week they launched a new thing and it's called Bloom, Bloom AI. And that's basically, yeah, a 24 seven AI IB expert. Um, so it's kind of like ChatGPT, but not really because it, it's trained on IB specific stuff. So materials, questions, past papers, um, and hence the help that it provides is much more IB specific. Uh, so it's not just about, yeah, question grinds. It, it, it's interactive and it helps you develop exam technique. But again, the best way to show you that is through an example. So once you're on the landing page, you just um, start, you can sign up for free with just with your email, you choose your subjects and eventually the dashboard has all that there. By the way, the interface is a gazillion times better than uh, Revision Village or whatever. Okay, so let, let's do a question. Let's do economics, monopolies, paper three. Yeah, sorry, we're gonna do an economics one because I'm helping my cousin with economics. Okay, define the term monopoly power and you see it's two marks. So let's say I say the firm is very dominant in the market, right? This, this is the definition of monopoly power. Then I click AI feedback. You see it's taking its time because it's actually going through Okay, I see, and it tells me, you have provided a vague definition, you only get one mark out of two. So it knows, it knows what the IB mark scheme looks like, but instead of, you know, you listing to the mark scheme, it's actually working that out through past papers. Um, so now, when you're gonna be in the exam, you're gonna remember that it's not just that, you need to have the second point. Um, yeah, so this is just one small example, but go and play around with it, because uh, it's really dope. So there you can see the difference. So you, you can use it for free, right? And then you have the basic account. And then you're limited in how many Bloom prompts, AI prompts you can use. I think it's like five a day. Um, but I, I subscribed because my little cousin's starting IB next year. 
So I'm going to get them this for Christmas. So I've subscribed. And then if you use, uh, obviously, the promo code SMART10, you do get 10% off. So I think it's like, I don't know, 80, 80 bucks a year or something. It's well worth it, man. Honestly, if you would have told me even as little as two years ago that this AI stuff would be available for IB students, I would have bitten your f arm off. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm always, I'm a big uh, believer in try before you buy. So go ahead and whatever, whatever you're working on today, any, any IB past paper questions, go and try it out with the basic version. And then if you like it, you can always subscribe later. Um, yeah, that's it for now. We're, we're, they are launching new stuff uh, every month so that there's some um, IA stuff coming out. There's some flashcards coming out and we'll keep you posted with all of that. All right. We're wrapping up the section by talking about tutoring. Um, so things like, do you need a tutor? You know, will a tutor help? And which options are available? Um, so full disclosure, it's, 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 it's very difficult because it's, it's going to vary student to student, school to school. Uh, you you got to look at this on a case by case basis. It's hard to give a recommendation in general as to whether you need a tutor. Also, I have, full disclosure, I am a former IB tutor. I've tutored for over a decade. So I'm going to try and keep my biases aside um, as to the merits of tutoring. I will try and give you from a perspective of when I was still a student, um, how, how I viewed tutoring. Okay. All right, so the question you've got to ask is, do you need an IB tutor? And unfortunately, I can't give you the answer. Like, it depends on so many different factors, right? Uh, the teachers that you have at your school, uh, what your goals will be, you know, the, the finances available to you. So it really is case by case. Um, what I will say is for things like IAs, EE, you know, your TOK essay, those things definitely, it helps to have someone look over outside of, of school that, you know, it's not a professional that you, that you can pay uh, within, like, you know, within the ethical <laughs> boundaries. Um, so yeah, the best thing to do is to write down what your goals are, right? Like, what do you want from IB? Do you need to get 35? Do you need to get a seven in this? And then ask yourself, will getting a really good tutor help me achieve that goal? That's, that's a good thing to start with. Um, but yeah, if, if you have teachers who are not very good, who are new to the IB, um, if you're struggling to get support in school, then definitely um, I would suggest looking for a tutor to help. Yeah, so I, I took high-level math and I got an offer from Oxford and they said, you have to get a seven, <laughs> which was not good because I was getting fives, uh, if that. Um, but I was like, no, I, you know, if I want to get into my dream uni, I need to get a seven. So I found a math tutor who was a former IB student, which was great, but he was also a PhD math student. So it wasn't that expensive. And then every week I saw him after school, uh, once or twice a week, also something around 20 euros, I think. Um, and I took my exam and just scraped a seven. <laughs> like I was at the lowest boundary. But I, I can sit here and confidently tell you, had I not had a math tutor, I would not have gotten a seven. Like, no way. Like there's no way I could have made myself better, even if I took all the time in the world. So without that math tutor, I would not have gone to seven and I would not have probably not have gone into my dream university. So there you go. There's two anecdotes of two times I took a tutor when I was in the IB and it made a huge fucking difference in my life. Yeah. So finally, where do you find tutors? Um, so there's some developments happening here. Obviously we have um, ibtutors.com, which is the Reddit thing where you can find, but we've been obviously partnering up with uh, Version Dojo. So we're probably going to merge the two things and the tutors will be working uh, on that platform. You can find some information here. If you go click on that. Yeah, just have a read of that. I'll link it below. Um, but over the next few weeks, I'll, I'll be talking more about how to find the right tutor and um, what your options are. Uh, yeah, so the last thing is about cost. So the reason we've partnered up with Revision Dojo is because I always made a big deal about, I think it's really gross how these elite Tutoring agencies basically screw students over and screw tutors over because they take too much. So this is this is like the, the dream platform that I've had where tutors make most, you know, get to pocket most of their money and it's affordable for students all over the world. So this looks like it's it.